Hello, welcome to the September 18th Downtown Design Review Committee meeting. Um, if everyone would silence their telephones, we, I think, are ready to get going. Um, first order of business is the roll call. Betsy Brunstetter. Present. Gigi Faulkner. Present. Charles Ainsworth. Present. Ike Aikamwande. Present. Connie Scothorn. Richard Tannenbaum. You have a quorum. Great. Um, our first applicant isn't here yet, as far as I can tell. Um, is, is it someone here from the uh, Chase Building? Oh, yes, thank you very much. Um, do I have a motion on the minutes? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, there is one case withdrawn. Um, David Ledbetter for Paxo Properties. Um, we don't have to, to make any action on that. We have no continuance request, no consent docket items. Um, first item on the agenda is not, the applicant isn't here yet. I'm assuming he'll be here. Um, and uh, so the second item on the agenda is 701 Couch Drive. Is the applicant present? Can you come forth, please? And I will be recusing myself on this, and Connie will as well. Hello, I'm Scott Dedman with ADG 116 uh, East Sheridan, Oklahoma City. And you are, do I have a mouse? So we were, we were here, um, I think, two months ago with an informational on this, and so we're here today to get our approval. And uh, just wanted to really quickly go back through this. I know you guys have seen this presentation several times before, but uh, again, we are talking about this site for the Municipal Courts Building. Uh, and it is a part of the Civic Center complex, and so we feel really privileged to be, uh, again, doing a, a project as a part of the Civic Center complex. This is really somewhat of a unique um, area to be building in in downtown uh, with the, uh, the public buildings, the municipal buildings that are a part of that. Um, one thing that's very unique about all of these is that there is a considerable amount of space around all of these buildings. And I think that's one thing we've, we've all noticed and one thing that we really appreciate about these buildings. Uh, you know, that's really made up of the county courthouse, the municipal auditorium, city hall, and the, uh, the original police headquarters. Uh, the, in the master plan of the site, uh, of course, was, the first phase was the police headquarters that's under construction right now, and hopefully you guys have had a chance to see that. The second phase, which we're wanting approval for today, is the municipal courts building. Um, just to give you an idea, this is the existing site. Of course, the first phase is the police headquarters. The uh, second phase 
is the new municipal courts building that would be coming up on this site. And then the final phase would be the, the uh, will be the demolition of the police, existing police headquarters and municipal, uh, municipal courts building. And we'll be uh, seeking the approval on that later. Just a couple of other views of, uh, of that site. Uh, similar to what we did at, uh, uh, or doing on the uh, police headquarters, the, uh, uh, we're, we're picking up materials from the context of the surrounding areas, from the, the limestone uh, to the red brick on some of the existing warehouse buildings to, uh, again, details uh, or trying to reflect details that we see on the Civic Center and the, the county courthouse, things like that. Uh, of course, uh, the county uh, jail is also in that, that area as well. Uh, just a quick rendering of the police headquarters as it's going up, and of course you can see that, um, and, uh, and the municipal courts building. Uh, I know one of the issues that we were seeking to, to get a variance on uh, with the Board of Adjustments and, and with your support is the setbacks uh, on the south side of the municipal courts. Uh, the, we talked about this last time we were here and the fact that we were creating a plaza area on the uh, it would be the southeast corner. Uh, that is to help with congestion of, of the, uh, the citizens that are utilizing the, the municipal courts. Uh, you know, currently, they have a very small area outside of their entry, and it becomes very congested and things like that. The, the other thing this gives us the possibility is, of course, the 1% the public art will be a part of this project as well. So this is giving us a place to display art. Uh, we also have a setback. Um, outside of the courtroom waiting areas. The courtrooms are set up where they're uh, more in the, the guts of the building and then outside of that to the south are, are, uh, is a waiting space and, and corridor space. We wanted to open that up with glass, <clears throat> but we also need to provide some privacy for the, the people that are waiting to, to go into court, so we needed a, a little bit of a setback also to provide a little bit of security. Uh, for that area because people will be standing and waiting out there and exposed with the glass. But we felt it was important to have the glass uh, as opposed to just having a blank wall on the street. So that's uh, the reason for those, those setbacks. Now the atrium itself, which you see right in the center of the, of the building, sits right on the property line. And then all other sides of the building uh, also sit on the property line. Let me back up here a second. <coughs> On the far east side, uh, we talked about again last time, is the secured parking court. This is where the judges and the uh, court uh, administrators park, and they need a secured place adjacent to the building so that they can go directly into the building. This also houses the, the generator uh, for this space as well. So we do have a large screen wall that uh, surrounds that. The screen wall. Um, uh, on the south side reflects the same materials that you see on the front of the building. And then it's also a brick screen wall around the, re uh, around the rest. Uh, Brian Hines with our office is uh, one of our lead designers on this, and he's going to go around the materials in more detail here in a second. Uh, and then uh, a rendering of the, uh, of the uh, main entry of the building of the atrium space. So I'm going to let Brian kind of walk you guys around the site uh, in more detail and also look at the elevations. Oh, yes. Right. Hi, I'm Brian Hines with ADG, uh, 1600 uh, East Sheridan. Um, currently, uh, you, you can see uh, the site plan is shown. This is actually our landscape plan. Uh, and um, we've included uh, a row of trees that would be outside this plaza. Again, the, the space outside of the waiting area for the uh, courtrooms would be on in, in this area here. Again, nicely uh, landscaped. Um, we had some, uh, some issues, of course, that we're going to the Board of Regents. Uh, I, I believe the meeting is today to address uh, Board of Adjustments uh, for uh, the setbacks. Uh, and also uh, working with the uh, Public Work Department on uh, some of the other items that are on the list by uh, recommendations for the staff. Uh, one of the items that we'd like to discuss today is um, the pilasters that would be around the uh, secured uh, yard. And essentially what we had hoped to attain 
would be the, the landscaping would soften these walls and not necessarily have to add more detail uh, to those walls. So really, I think that was the only item on the list that we thought you know, we could discuss today and see if there was any uh, true opposition to that. We have, um, I don't know if there is anything you guys would like to discuss. The main item also uh, on F shows the difference between a base bid option on the site. The, so the first site plan would be to maintain the existing curb lines and essentially do what they had uh, done on, on couch uh, across Lee, uh, simply painted what we would desire is, uh, of course, the ad alt site plan where we're doing the curb bump outs, we're basically creating protected intersections uh, for pedestrians and uh, essentially claiming some of the wider streetscapes uh, similar to uh, Project 180. Also the landscape types that we're using around the perimeter, also very similar uh, to what we've done on uh, police headquarters, uh, extending the landscaping out to those curbs and softening the pedestrian ways. We also have uh, some colored elevations that we added to the packet. Again, uh, same materials as uh, the police headquarters, uh, taking uh, a, a little bit of black brick and red brick uh, from some of the surrounding buildings to, to soften uh, and take the slightly more economical uh, cast stone uh, pieces or, or limestone pieces and uh, using those as the uh, calcium silicate uh, masonry that's around, again, tying into the context of the existing civic buildings. So here, of course, is the north facade. And what we had originally tried to do is break up the facade. It was a, a very long facade. So the CSMU, uh, and, or you know, to sort of represent the limestone, is the larger columns that divide up the long run of the, the north facade. Here on the east is the enclosure. Again, we have uh, what could be a very large generator that we would like to try to break up with the height of these uh, walls that enclose the, the secure parking area. The, of course, the, the south facade is the main, main uh, facade facing the, the public entry side, and then uh, the west being you know, a more utilitarian uh, entry for um, the Sally Port. Any any questions? Any discussion? Any comments, Ike? Chuck? Ah, mm. uh, oh, we, go. we disappeared. Can you go back to the slide where it shows the um, the staff talk to you about some vertical elements on that? Um, but you wanted to do landscaping. Can you just talk about that a little further? Yes. So um, essentially all across the north facade, uh, if I may jump to the landscape plan. So there, there are several lengths of, of wall across this side uh, that we are essentially have large planters with landscaping in. Uh, one of the items I know that we've um, been under discussion is, is this one, and we really need to obtain a little more information on the street widths. I know that we've talked, discussed with staff on being able to potentially I add some landscaping along that, that wall as well. And uh, with the uh, Public Works Department, we'd, we'd like to see if we can actually narrow this curb cut, but currently to allow for uh, a, a secured, enclosed uh, dumpster location here. We really needed to allow the, the dump truck not to actually back out onto the street, be able to back out onto uh, a, a more protected area here and then uh, into the street. Okay. Do we have any staff comments? I do have a, a slight update to uh, the conversation about the landscaping on Lee Avenue. Staff has been working with Public Works, and we've uh, talked with Jim Llewellyn who uh, believes that uh, there's, we can incorporate, the city can incorporate a, a three-foot planting zone and approximately four 
three foot wide planting beds that crate myrtles could be placed in uh, that would potentially satisfy uh, that that requirement or that guideline within the code so that that item uh, in terms of following up on discussions with public works uh, has been addressed and, and will potentially be satisfied good good thank you yes, anything else well so so the plannings are they consistent with plannings that we're using project 180 uh, there will not be an actual landscape zone like you see in project 180 um, where there will be a change in materials but there will actually be a bed which will be three feet in width which is consistent with certain aspects of project 180 typically in project 180 there's a five and a half foot uh, landscape zone that can be found similar to what you'd see on main street and also in other areas where there's limited right away there's usually a three and a three and a half foot so the width and, and proportion of those uh, planter beds uh, would be consistent with certain and, aspects and who's going to maintain these uh, that would be within the public right away so i would imagine it would so the same with people that are uh, taking care of project 180 that's a good question and I'd be happy to follow up on that for you because right now it doesn't look like anybody's taking care of it okay. comment uh, anything else any other comments any comments from the audience okay does anybody want to make uh, a try at a motion we have several recommendations as to uh, conditions and uh, variances on page six we have a list. Yeah, I'll make a motion. Uh, move that we approve the application on the basis that the project complies with the intent, regulations, and criteria of the downtown design district um, ordinance as referenced in section C of the staff report with the following conditions that a variance to the building setback regulations be obtained from the Board of Adjustments, that a variance to the front yard and side yard fence height regulations be obtained from the Board of Adjustment, that the proposed driveway at Robert S. Kerr Avenue that provides access to the secure parking area be reduced in width to an extent be determined by the Public Works Department, that approval from the Director of Public Works be obtained for the three proposed driveways to be located at, along Robert S. Kerr Avenue, and that the proposed south and east sides of the proposed wall screen, uh, yeah, screening, the secured park area be enhanced with additional vertical character through the use of pilasters or other detail, and that an alternate bid be added to the base bid project package that provides the curb bump outs at all four intersection corners of the project site. Do I have a second? Uh, excuse me. Uh, yes. I would like to address the oh. item, is, I think it's item F, with the pilasters. Yes. I, I th thought we had addressed that with the, with the landscaping. You felt like that was... The landscaping was something uh, in this in this report that, that did make a step towards addressing it uh, in terms of uh, landscaping is, is the point that addresses our concerns along the north side of the facade. Right. But it was um, a consideration of ours that pilasters would be added to that north element of the facade, or the south element of the facade. Okay. Uh, we as a condition. So that is currently in here. Okay. Um, could, can I address that further? Please do. Okay. The uh, let me let me back up on this. So the south element that we're talking about oops, is uh, I think in this rendering you see is this this uh, screen wall, the south screen wall. The screen wall is, is done out of a, a CSMU material, which is has a, an appearance very similar to, to limestone. Uh, it's done in, a, in a, a random bond, so there's uh, different heights of, uh, of the stone material. Uh, so it has a lot of detail in that wall. There's also plannings, at the, there's a planning bed at the bottom of that wall, so there's some landscaping to soften that. Kind of the concept of that wall, I mean, if we want to talk sort of architectural concept here, it's, it's like one of the the vertical panels that you see in the architecture of, of this kind of laid on its side, basically. So we, we looked at a lot of options on how to treat that wall. And by adding anything vertical to that, it just made that wall more busy and more complicated. Uh, so architecturally, we really feel like this is the right way to address that. And anything that we would add to that would 
uh, would not positively affect the, the architecture. Also, this, this plaza, uh, again, is going to most likely be the site of some public artwork, again, that will, that will soften that entire plaza area. So we, we would like to see that taken from the, the, the recommendations. I, I understand what you're saying about the busyness of that, and, and that's not the, you know, that's the, the least important aspect of this facade. Right. It's the... It's, it's really the thing that leads you into the entry. Yeah. Um, okay. Ike, would you like to address that? It's item... It's actually item E. Uh, yeah. I think that um, that's definitely understandable. Um, I would uh, propose to strike just that portion of the motion that I have. Great, thank you. All right, then I have um, a uh, motion on number one, approving the application uh, with removing of the requirement for uh, vertical character or pilasters. And I will call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That one is approved. And now we need a recommendation of approval to the Board of Adjustment. Would anyone like to work on, work on that? I also move to provide a recommendation of approval to the Board of Adjustment for variance to the building setback regulations and the front yard and side yard fence height regulations. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Same sign. That motion passes also. Congratulations and thank you. The next item is, oops, the next item is 320 North Broadway. Is the applicant present? I dropped all this. Could you come forward? State your name, tell us your story, write your name on that little piece of paper in front of you. Okay. Um, Matt Cregan, I'm with Cumulus Design. Also with me is Mark Roush uh, with Roush Architects. And uh, Well, this project is a, a uh, renovation of an existing site. There's a drive-through bank and a retail bank on this site right now that the retail bank has been closed for years, more than 10 years, and hasn't been used. It's very small and doesn't function the way the bank needs it to. Um, there's a basement that goes from that retail bank all the way across the site and this new design is to remove the existing bank, build one that is that works for Chase, and uh, redo the drive-through canopies also. Tear all the drive-through canopies out. Completely change what's on the site right now, above grade. Uh, we're proposing a one-story building. We're asking for a variance on that because the bank doesn't need a three-story building and doesn't really have use for it. Um, and the other variance we're looking for is, uh, I believe there's a requirement for a 10-foot building setback on all the property lines. And we have pushed it into a corner where we're, we're meeting that requirement on, sorry, we're meeting that requirement on two sides, but not the third side. We've, we have customized this design for this site. This is not the typical Chase prototype. The floor plan is similar, but the facade is completely different. Uh, this would be a one-of-a-kind bank of, for Chase that doesn't exist anywhere else in the United States. Anything else? I think it's it. Okay. Um, Brandon, would you like to address anything? Oh, uh, I'll, uh, okay. Take it. Uh, yeah, uh, the applicants came in and gave you guys a preview last month, and this is essentially the same uh, as part of our condition. It, 
Yeah, we added that we thought that the west facade could still be dressed up a little bit. And I understand programmatically with the vault and the stair. You know, I, I understand why it is the way it is, but at the same time, we're trying to do everything we can to reinforce the walkability character along that stretch of Broadway. Um, is there anything you think you could do to I think, uh, improve Lisa, that you facade? I think some, uh, some display cases. Yeah, or I, th like I thought, yeah, I understood that they maybe couldn't get transparency per se, but maybe some big display cases with some super graphics oh, of we, some sort, maybe some we masonry, could, we could definitely masonry look at that. detail. I can submit something to staff to, for approval. Okay, is that something that staff could do administratively? Yes. Any questions from the commission? Sorry, it seems like I'm always the one with questions. Um, so I stared at this thing, and again, our plan is really small. So are you taking out the retaining walls and the screen walls that are currently surrounding the parking? Yes, most of those, with the exception, there will be the one 400-square-foot structure in the south uh, east corner that would remain the planner and and, and landscape around that would remain. The rest of it would be removed to provide a more open landscape area facing the street. So are you screening the parking in any way? Yes, it would, there would be landscape screening instead of the wall which, and sidewalk area. On the interior side of the, that retaining wall slash screening wall, uh, the parking is pushed away from that. So if we, could you go to the landscape plan? Yeah, and instead, you know, we intended to, where that long wall was, is to turn that into a, a raised landscape area with trees and shrubs. You're talking about on the, on the big triangle thing? Yes. 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 So, but those five trees probably aren't, I mean, that's all I see is, am I missing something? Well, there would be the, the, the shrubs and the headlight screening in, as well. And we'd be happy to address that with staff. Okay. I don't see any shrubs, so that's going to confirm. Right. It, that's just main, this mainly just shows the, you know, the larger trees. So this isn't a complete landscape plan? It is, but it, it's, it only shows the, the, the counts are on the plan, the total counts of the landscaping, but it would make the plan too cluttered for you to really see. You know, we, it'd be, can, we can handle a shrub screen for, for parking. Well, I think that would be nicer. I, I mean, the wall now is kind of a, a feature sure. that very effectively screens the parking lot, and it seems like you're just opening up all this parking for everyone to look at. I'd be happier with some, some kind of screening. Okay. I have an arbitrary question. Have you been working with the city on the intersection? Uh, that's nothing that we really look at. I'm just curious about that. The light, um, that was a one-way, I believe. It's currently a one-way in, into that space, currently. Uh, along? Uh, this exit over here. Along Broadway, and, or E.K. Gaylord, I'm sorry. Um, I, it's currently a, I thought it was a two-way access point, but we can work with staff. It is two-way. Oh, is it two-way? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we were, the, the only modification to the traffic pattern is we were closing one drive along the western side of the, the property. We're not changing any of those curb cuts. Oh, okay. Um, any other questions? Any questions from the um, audience? Do we have a motion? But, Betsy, <laughs> uh, we just realized, uh, Matt and Mark, that on the agenda we did not announced that a variance needed to be recommended. Oh, okay. So we can't, we can approve the project, but we can't make the recommendation for the variance. So we'll have to do at that this, at the, ne at the next, next meeting. meeting. And that's, uh, that's not Sorry. the applicant. The applicant did not miss it. We missed it in our process. Okay. We are scheduled for the, the, the next meeting in for our October. variance. Yeah. I guess, uh, the the Board of, Adjustment. Board of Adjustment, so uh, yeah, I think that's a, something we can get a, a recommendation before that meeting. Um, 
next We'd have to have a special is, meeting. Yeah, we'd have to have a October special meeting. October 2nd is the, the next right. meeting. What's the date for the? I think it's the third. I think it's yeah. second is it or the third. Um, That's a good point. How many people are coming for Friday? Well, we don't have we don't have enough time to notice. Yeah, yeah. So it was a good idea. If you if if uh, the committee uh, is willing and it can offer a special meeting, that would be very helpful to the applicant. Paula, what's the Soon, like from today, what's the soonest we could have it? To give notice? It is on the October 2nd, the, the Board of Adjustment meeting. And we could meet as late as October 2nd and give right. you the recommendation. You could that morning. So, so we will, should we poll you? Are, am I hearing the committee is, is open? No, you cannot do that. I mean, I mean can we? Call you for a date. Call me for call, call them for a date, not for a decision. Well, it's, <laughs> we might, if you have your calendar, calendars available, you might check it for October second. See if that would be available. That would be two weeks from now. Checks out of town. Bonnie's out of town. It'd just be Ike and me, and that would probably not be good. <laughs> so. They don't have to make. A Do you have a date that you're not out? What's the what's the notice period? Is it a week? Oh, okay. But is that enough notice for the? This would be. Okay, so we got. I can. I could do it on Tuesday or Thursday. I mean, Tuesday or Wednesday next week. Can we do it at 9? It's going to take five minutes. Oh, wait. I can't do it Tuesday at 9. Could we do it Wednesday at 9? No? We have four. Wednesday at nine. Next Wednesday at nine. I can do it. Right. Fr Friday the twenty-sixth is the soonest you can do it because oh. we can't get the public notice out. In okay. <laughs> I can do it Friday at nine. Yeah, they said we can't do it until the 26th. Well, we appreciate that. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. Sorry, everybody else. We are There's anything we need to do trying to make this is. Me too. Okay, we got it. Friday. All right, now, so do we have a motion on this? <laughs> Zoning ordinance is referenced in section C of the staff report with the conditions that A, the variance of building height, building setback regulations be obtained from the Board of Adjustment, B, that display cases or other detail be added to the rest facade and submitted to the staff for approval, and um, that additional screening be provided for the parking. Um, that's my motion. Can I ask a question before? Do we have to say it's it would be uh, contingent on the Board of Adjustment? Can you add that to your motion? Contingent on the record on the Board of Adjustment, the Board of Adjustment approving the variance for the building height and setback. Okay. So we've got a, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank there you go. We'll see you on the, uh, the
the 26th. Yes. Now, anything else? We need to be here on the 26th. Yes. Yes. Someone should be here okay. for okay. your... Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, the next item. Do I need... Susan, are we ready to move on? Yep. Okay. Um, 500 West Sheridan. Is the applicant present? Hey, good morning. I'm Kenneth Dennis with TAP Architecture, 415 North Broadway. Finally, an easy one. Oh my God. Good deal. Let me sign in here real quick. All right, so this morning we're here to visit with you a little bit about the storm shelter design for John Rex Elementary School. Um, but before we do that, I just wanted to visit with you a little bit about John Rex Elementary School. I don't know, I, I know Lisa has been to the school, her son goes there, but uh, maybe not everyone has had the opportunity to go by and check it out. So we just had a couple slides of uh, some of the completed project, uh, August 20th was the very first day of school. That's our official liftoff for John Rex. Uh, these are a couple shots. I apologize, uh, they're not professionally shot. I uh, took them myself, but uh, they do show the character of the building. Uh, I'm sure you've seen it uh, driving by. Um, the upper right photograph is just one of the examples of the sliver windows that we put in the facade uh, at several different locations. They uh, are symbolic of the John Rex rocket ship. And then, just very quickly, a couple shots of the interior. At the bottom, a uh, large photograph is the commons area, all a bustle with activity at the, one of the back-to-school uh, afternoons when people are coming to meet their teachers. And then a um, couple Im images of classrooms and uh, of students that are there currently using their technology uh, and learning, 21st century learning environment. And what we're here to talk to you today about is the safe room that was added to the project and uh, some of the implications that has on the site plan. Uh, what you see right up here uh, before you on the screen is the revised site plan with the location of the above ground safe room off of California. So it'll be at the south end of the site. Uh, we have an above ground storm shelter. It is designed for an occupancy load of 540 people that would accommodate the entire student population plus the staff. Uh, of John Rex. Um, so again, it is sized accordingly. Uh, it is designed to meet ICC 500 standards. I have uh, some people here in my support. Uh, if you have any questions regarding the storm shelter or safe room aspects of the project, as well as uh, I have Mike Satong, our landscape architect, who'll come up and talk to you a little bit about the changes that we had to make with the site uh, to accommodate the safe room or the storm shelter. So I'm going to have Mike come up and talk about a few of the site features. Mike, <clears throat> Mike Satong, 3128 Northwest 20th. Um, some of the changes that took place uh, when the storm shelter were play was placed on the site, we, we had to adjust our, our playground area and everything on in the courtyard to make some space for that. So what we did is we added a uh, uh, push the playground piece closer to the school on the recommendations of Joe Pierce, the principal. Uh, right now we have a temporary temporary playground in. It'll be augmented, uh, I believe, in December. Um, some of the elements of the storm shelter that are a little bit different and interesting, uh, we're capturing all of our storm water off of our roof. Uh, we're going to we're going to capture about 67,000 gallons of water a year. And we have a cistern. Uh, that we're going to capture that in and then use that cistern to then water our uh, vegetable garden and uh, learning learning garden that you'll that are kind of in that little triangular area to the left or my left of the of the uh, building uh, we're going to use a solar power pump and then that's going to be worked into the curriculum at the school where for sort of the science technology uh, engineering and math component and utilize that those elements to teach kids about growing food, about hydraulics, about solar power and energy, and then 
using all of those things as part of their curriculum. Um, also working with Urban Ag to help us uh, help us with a manual to uh, maintain and keep the uh, keep the gardens going. Uh, so working with them a little bit to help Joe Pierce and the school to give them direction on how to keep that and maintain that. So working with them. Um, through those through those pieces, uh, we also have a large artificial turf area that's specified to the to the north again to cut maintenance, cut our water uh, cut our water usage, and uh, give them a, an area to play all year round. Uh, then we've got the the earth mound, which is a about a six foot tall mound of earth that's going to have a uh, love grass kind of a bushy grass around it to be a nice contrast from the clipped lawn to this kind of wild little area that the kids can go up. There's a compass rose at the top so they can get start learning general cardinal directions and seeing what's north, south, east, and west. So trying to use the playground as a plinth for education outside of the building and incorporate that with what's happening inside. So all of the those things are sort of in the phase two along with the, with the um, storm ship. So with okay. that. So, with that, we'll talk a little bit about the architecture of this, the storm shelter itself. And this is a view uh, from the south along California looking north towards the um, proposed storm shelter. Uh, currently, uh, this location right here where the covered walkway is, that was uh, constructed as the phase one and, and, and was previously approved. This is a pre-K and kindergarten drop-off zone. Uh, by placing the storm shelter just west of that area, um, we are providing covered walkway for the students and staff as they exit the building uh, if they need to go to the storm shelter for safety. Uh, so they'll have a covered walkway that gets them into the building. And then uh, once they're in here, obviously they should be protected. It's designed to meet the 250 mile per hour uh, wind load for such storms as an EF5 rated tornado. Um, the materials that we're using on the storm shelter are similar to what was used on the main building. Uh, we have the dark iron spot brick and the natural limestone uh, to carry on that, uh, the same materials. And then um, along this facade, what we're trying to do, again, uh, with, the, with this building is to enhance kind of the sense of arrival at this kindergarten and pre-kindergarten drop-off area. And so what we're doing is we wanted to take some cues from the existing building, in particular these sliver windows, these vertical elements that you see in the building that represent a John Rex rocket, and then implement them or bring them into the facade of the safe room, the storm shelter. Um, we don't quite have the verticality here uh, of the main building, but what we're doing, instead of putting windows, uh, because we don't need windows into the storm room or storm shelter, is we're utilizing these uh, painted, uh, pre-finished, uh, brightly colored steel panels that are inset into the wall, again, with the same uh, proportions as the vertical sliver windows, kind of mimicking that idea of being launched up. Uh, and so we're pulling colors from the colored window frames that are currently on the existing building. And then we are also proposing uh, a, a uh, signage that is the John Rex logo right here. So all in all, uh, this functional space for safety during a, a severe storms also serves as a, a sense of entry, a point of entry, and uh, really adds to that sense of uh, identity and arrival for people as they approach the school from the south and are dropping people off along California. And then this is a view from the playground side, the, the schoolyard, looking back towards the southeast. So uh, here you see the cistern that Mike was talking about. Uh, and then these, this is the, the schoolyard garden with the raised beds. We also are terminating uh, this area of the garden with some vertical playground elements uh, that mimic what we call uh, the forest. They're just these vertical colored poles. Uh, that um, are somewhat sculptural, but yet kids can uh, utilize their imagination and creative play uh, out on the playground and uh, kind of swing around them or, or whatever. Uh, and then one of the things I would point out is there's a, a, a 
proposal to uh, put out a call to artists. Uh, we know we'd have to get that approved through the Arts Council as well. Um, but we would like to see an artist come in and do a mural on the cistern uh, as well. So that would help dress up that area as well. And then just for uh, a reminder, I know it's, I mean, you probably don't need to be reminded because you probably are very familiar with the school, but we added these just to show you, again, the overall character of the existing building and how um, the new storm shelter design, basically, this is the southeast corner of the building, uh, how it takes those materials, turns the corner, and then just heads uh, right along here. This is how it is today, the entry portal with the gateway, and then the storm shelter would set here. And that's, that's our presentation on the storm shelter. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to uh, respond to them. Okay. Any questions? Brandon, you want to address anything? On this? There were only two items for consideration for this project, one of which was signage. Uh, the signage for the, that facade, as you saw in the illustration, was slightly over that which is allowed for building frontage. However, we, uh, in looking at this, uh, we felt that it was important to consider the additional facade area or facade frontage for what has already been proposed and approved, which is uh, uh, on the east side of this, uh, this image. So we felt it was important to consider both of these, the proposed safe room structure as one structure with what was also approved. And so and considering that, that does allow for the signage that's proposed. Uh, we just felt it was important to, to point that out. Uh, additionally, uh, the other issue or consideration for this project is a guideline, but it is the 50% transparency requirement for facades along ground floors on street frontages. However, understanding the, the needs of this particular project and its purpose, that doesn't uh, make uh, windows possible. And so we understand that and feel that the, uh, the creative design applications of the vertical components uh, uh, do offer a reasonable alternative to that requirement recommend approval of the project. Any, I, I feel like you've done a really nice job with this. It's, uh, it's gorgeous. I noticed the, I mean, for a safe room, yeah. it's, it's terrific. It actually adds <coughs> value, I think, to the project. And, and also, I just want to uh, thank you for doing such a great job on the building because, you, you know, we worked diligently on that project yes. up, up here. No, so. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a, uh, you know, a labor of love for us. And at the grand opening last week, it was wonderful to be able to go there and see uh, the kids. I think, was it Eli? Or was, was he singing in that? I thought I saw him. But I think I saw him. Um, anyway, it was just amazing to see the kids there and uh, utilizing that school. Uh, it really makes a difference, I think, in downtown. It's fun to see young people uh, during the day out there climbing on the playground equipment and learning. So, thank you. Perfect. Any other comments? Great. Okay, we have a motion from Faulkner, second from Connie. All in favor? Any opposed? The application is approved. Thank you very much for being here, and we can't wait to see it done. All right, thank you. You know, I almost felt like I was in New York yesterday. Those kids, have you seen them? They hold these little things oh, and the, stay together, and it was the very- The rope with the handles yeah, yeah, on yeah, it or something? Okay, cool. Yeah, those are neat, yeah. Yeah, that is an exciting thing, and we're way ahead of the, the game with that. So we do need to step back to the first item, which is the 300 North Walker um, project. Uh, is the applicant present at all? <laughs> so, no applicant. So um, what would you, Brandon, um, can you tell us, or Lisa? Can you tell us what's going on with that? Uh, the applicant was not at the last meeting. And since a week or two before the last, well, 
in, they brought, they submitted this case in July or June, and it's been a continuous back and forth on information and changing information of what they wanted to do, and we have yet to receive what we feel is the completed application. Um, so I was hoping they'd be here so I could prompt them to submit their samples and latest renderings, but they're not. So we ask for continuance and hopefully we'll be able to make uh, meaningful contact with them for next time. Because as you guys have observed, they are doing some, at, at a minimum, they're doing some maintenance work right now, which they're permitted to do without a CA. But if they start changing colors and materials, then they got to come in. Well, no, I mean, I just want to reiterate my concern about their moving forward with this project with apparently little or no approval and clearly anything would enhance what's there but, but still I think that we have an opportunity there with them hopefully to uh, make this a lot better project and so do you have any sign from them that they may be coming forward with anything yet? We have not I mean, they look like yeah. they're moving forward without you. Uh, well, I, after our la that was your concern la at the last meeting, and so I, I went by and I looked specifically to see if what they had proposed to do, they had proposed to reconstruct gables specifically, was the main kind of structural element. And I did not see, this was last week, I did not see that happening. I saw they had ripped out big chunks of the wall, so one could say that's with the intent to replace it as is. Um, the, uh, yeah, I don't know, the, uh, uh, there appear to be several owner entities involved and that's, we think, is why we've had a difficult time getting decisions made, but uh, we've asked to continue it for one more meeting and then I guess we, but that's, the committee could, 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 could just deny it and have them resubmit and start all over. Uh, but we've asked just continue it one more, and then at that time it should be clear, hopefully, that they're. But, but on a submittal, aren't they? Are, don't you submit materials and that sort of thing, or did they just? Is this just kind of a placeholder till they can do that? Well, they they submitted renderings. Sorry. They submitted renderings. The renderings that you got. They submitted the renderings, and we asked for clarification of the materials in terms of samples and revised renderings, and they haven't provided that. And it was in those conversations that they said, well, now we're not going to use this material, we're going to use that material, but we don't have anything. Okay, well, I'm inclined to continue it one more time, but at that point in time, if we don't have anything, then I think they're going to have to reapply. So I'll make a, um, a motion to continue this application till the October 16th meeting in order to for the applicant can provide us a little more detail on materials. Okay, that was a uh, Chuck and Ike motion. All in favor? Any opposed? That item will be continued. The next item, Paul has been very patient out there. That's item 7A, 417 West Park. The applicant present. Paul Lefevre for the uh, applicant and Chris Fleming uh, is uh, here also uh, representing the Midtown Hill. Um, this is a uh, request for a recommendation uh, to the uh, Planning Commission to uh, close uh, portions of uh, Park uh, Place. Um, the uh, Park Place uh, is um, a fairly lightly used street. Uh, the proposal is to turn it into a one-way street going east. Uh, the plans have been uh, developed in conjunction with meetings with, with Dennis Clowers and Eric uh, Winger. Um, and the site uh, is where the Dust Bowl the bowling alley is presently under construction. It opens on to 10th Street. The uh, uh, German uh, sausage and beer garden opens on to Park Place. Um, and the, uh, 
the proposed closing here and eventual vacation would allow uh, approximately 40 spaces, parking spaces, and uh, to try to accommodate uh, not only these businesses, but, but others uh, in the area. Um, so it would provide 40 parking spaces, which, you know, obviously they need over there, right? Um, where would that, how would that lay out? Do we have that? I, I haven't, all I've got, I think, is this. Yeah, there, uh, this, uh, that's a good point, Betsy. This application is just asking for recommendation of the closing. Right. It's not ask. they haven't made a design proposal I, for the streetscape. For, for the reconstruction and reorganization. Yeah, They're I'm just, just curious about that. Yeah, that's why it doesn't exist yet because they haven't. Okay. As far as I, I think, Chris may have a verbal mm -hmm. description. I'm just. Chris, Chris 191225 North Broadway. The intent is to have 45 degree parking on each side where the widths allow. Um, at the nearer to the intersection of Walker and Park, it will be a couple parallel spaces on each side because it's kind of choked down there as you enter or is. You come off a walker, it'll be 45 degree parking on each side, um, head in 45 degree parking, and again, it'd be one way to the east. So you'd, you'd basically make the right hand turn off the this, this circle, and you know, you could just pull in the parking spot. Okay. What, uh, the Traffic Commission has heard this, or? No? No. Okay. Uh, that's probably next step, right? If, if, if required on the on the redesign, of course, we'll, we'll go through that process. And, and so what, what's, what's happening here is we're leaving 22 feet of drive lane. And so that's, so, so the, the one-way portion of that, um, we'll, we'll have to go through traffic commission to convert one-way to two-way. The 22 feet of drive lane is actually enough width to allow for two-way traffic should there ever be future complaints about that being a one-way street, because you know in the past we petitioned hard to make everything two-way, um, but we feel with this street at its location and its traffic volume, it makes sense to do it as, as a one-way street, but we're leaving the capacity in the public realm to convert it back to two-way should that ever need to happen. Brandon or Lisa, any other? So all this is is a recommendation to the Board of Adjustment? Planning. Oh, to Planning Commission, sorry. Can you talk to your, talk to your microphone, please? Sorry. Does this go out to surrounding property owners? Is there any objection or comments on this? It does. I don't know. They sent him a notice. Well, I, I'm not sure that our our notice is to provide a recommendation. So we so we didn't notice. But when it goes to planning commission, they will notice adjacent property owners. And, and they have noticed adjacent property owners. We they have noticed adjacent property owners because we receive hours for our various properties. Now we have we have neighboring support. Um, Excuse me, we have neighboring support from, you know, adjacent owners. I mean, we, t together, um, for the application for, va for vacation, we have well over, I don't even know what it is, 60, 50%. What, what, well over 50% um, of support for that. And the reason why it's not 100% is we can't get a hold of the other people. So. Okay. Any other comments? Well, I had to work hard today in order to get down that street in order to find out whether it should be a street or not. So <laughs> it seems logical to close it, but... Um, and, again, and again, Connie, we're, we're leaving the actual street in the public realm. And so right, right now, as you see it in the picture, if you go back to the picture, um, the curbs will just be pushed back to allow for on-street parking. And so we're going to leave the street, which will essentially be the drive lanes for, you know, an urban parking lot, if you want to call it that. Um, we will leave the, the street in the public realm, push the curbs back, and have 45-degree parking along the street. Looks like the trucks are already doing that. Oh, um, that, that, that's kind of a demonstration. They're parking backwards, but that's... 
Um, but the current street is about 22 feet, isn't it? I mean, that, that, that's about right. It's a 60-foot right-of-way. Right, but the, uh -huh. the paving, curb to curb, is probably about 22 feet wide. Yeah, that's, a, that's about right. Okay. Do I have a motion? Um, move approval. I'm sure it's not that simple. Recommendation. Recommendation to the Planning Commission to close the rights of way. Same. Okay, that's a Connie and Ike motion. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks for uh -huh. sticking this out. Thank you, guys. Um, other business, 2015 meeting schedule. Has everybody had a chance to look at that? I mean, it, do you have any any comments about it that might be interesting? Well, there was nothing. There's nothing different. It's still third Thursdays at 9:30. Nine's a little bit early. Okay. Um, do we have a motion for approval of the schedule? That's a GG check motion. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. Um, we have the administrative approvals mentioned. Anything super interesting? This has been a, kind of a long meeting, so. And, uh, neither uh, Brandon nor I worked on many of these, but there, there's uh, most of them were revisions to previously approved okay. applications. Okay. Um, any comments from the planning staff? You said that we have something at 8.30 tomorrow? The, uh, demolition ordinance workshop. Okay. Uh, ninth, uh, 10th floor, the big 10th floor conference room at 4.20. Okay. How uh, long Four hours? Three hours? We've scheduled two hours. I would expect an hour. And this... Good. <laughs> Um, uh, this, uh, so we, we've invited, this is a public meeting, we've invited all the commissions and some other, we've made a public notice, um, but it, it won't be, if you can't make it, it won't be the first, the only or first time that, that it comes to committee. It'll come to you again at the next meeting or the next meeting uh, to affirm um, from this committee specifically that that's uh, in support of it. So the best way for us to really understand it would be to show up tomorrow and... Yes, yes, yeah. And Gigi's been uh, uh, very involved in its awesome. direction and crafting. Yeah, okay. you're part of our focus group. Good job. <laughs> Any comments from committee me members? Uh, are we, do we have a candidate for, thank you, do we have a candidate for our other, our missing open, spot? Put our missing spot are open. Yes, we submitted um, Betsy's name for reappointment and your name for reappointment. And we made a couple of recommendations for this position. Um, I don't immediately remember who they were because I worked on all the committees the same day. That's fine. I, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, we, we have, we, we've made, a, it's, um, it's an issue that it's vacant. Okay. Good. I was just curious because from time to time we are, when we have, especially when we have just a few oh. people here, we have two recusals. That's like, yeah, it, it, I mean, it that is, does, it is that can issue. does certainly put us in a short. It, it is an issue. We've, we, we've sent oh. a list of names to the mayor and Good. said that, you know, reiterated that stands Stan's position has been vacant for like, like he's already gone to England and come back. In, you know, yes. <laughs> the, the yeah. just, and he's still long. missing yes. us. Yes. Yes. That's back. how long <laughs> it's been. He just back. Just back. Perhaps we held it. So well, that's, it that's how long it's been. Yeah, it's been over a year. It has been. Yeah. So, so yes. I, I wanted to thank Brandon and Lisa. I think they've done an excellent job being kind of new in this in these positions uh -huh. and um, just just from the standpoint of being an applicant for this for the courts thing I can understand what they're doing and I know they're being very thorough and I totally appreciate that so thank you. congratulations yeah. to you guys thank you. yeah there's lots of comments thank you next meeting is October 
16th. And um, I think we're done. Do we have a lot of applications for, for next? We uh, don't. The, uh, we have the um, classic comments came in, the uh, 13th and Chartel. That came in. It's on my desk. Um, that's, that's it. Yeah, and a sign for Oklahoma City Community Foundation. So there's some, okay. some not a lot. Very good. We are adjourned. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Chuck, for giving up money. We don't want you to do that, though, because that doesn't. Oh, and speaking of money.